As social media use continues to rise among teenagers, so have rates of depression, anxiety, and suicide. One teen was personally affected and she decided to take action. Emma Lemke created the Log Off Movement to encourage her peers to reduce their time on the internet and rethink their relationship to it. And Emma joins us live now this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. So why don't you start by telling us your story of social media addiction. I understand that you joined Instagram at the age of 12. Yes, got it at the age of 12 in sixth grade. Um, started off with apps like Instagram, Twitter, um, Snapchat, and I stayed on those apps largely for five to six hours a day up until the ninth grade, feeling as though my anxiety, my, my OCD, my self-image greatly decreased during that time. Um, and, and as a young woman, I felt as though my disordered eating really got worse. So in general, really felt the quality of my life decrease. So I turned in the ninth grade after after having a breaking point, after hearing that buzz and having the Pelobian response to grab for it, I said, what am I doing? How is it that these apps can have so much control over me? And how can I really figure out what it's doing to me to then mitigate its harm? And what I found in all of that is there is a huge amount of data out there. And there's so many studies that prove the negative correlation between increased usages of social media and the decreased mental well-being of a lot of teens but there were no teens in the space. So I decided to create Log Off as a means to create that community and for me to kind of have people there to, to make sure I didn't feel alone and that they didn't feel alone in having these negative experiences. And are you asking people to completely log off or just kind of find healthy habits? No, we are definitely not asking everyone to completely log off. Um, for me, I had to get off fully for a few months. A lot of our members, though, are not off. I am one of those. I still have Instagram. I still have Twitter. What we're really saying is you have to mentally log off, take a second, and reflect on your own screen time. Ask, what makes me happiest? Why am I on my phone right now? what doesn't make me the happiest. And from there, you can really curate your experience to be the most productive for the individual. What's this been like in, in your inner circle of friends? Have you had pushback? Any friends say, you know what, I appreciate what you're doing, but I'm not into it. You know, I got that from my sister, actually. So she's a huge TikTok fan. Um, but honestly, every conversation that I've had, um, even with her, with my friend group, um, is very open. And I, I think that it shows that a lot of people are willing to engage in the conversation. They're willing to sit down and say, you know what, I agree with you on this point. I disagree with you on that point. And that's kind of what Log Off is working to do. It's to destigmatize that conversation to be able to find healthier habits. But largely when the Social Dilemma released, when Frances Haugen released um, the Facebook papers, when a lot of those large media kind of uprisings came to fruition, more of my friends came to me and said, actually, Emma, like I have been struggling with this. I do feel like my body image is really deteriorating. Um, so it's been exciting to see that as those larger kind of pieces of information have come out, more people have been willing to engage and share their own experiences. Emma, before we let you go, I kind of want to ask you about your feelings on social media in tragic incidences. Um, in the Chicago area, we've been dealing with uh, a tragic shooting that happened yesterday during a 4th of July parade in Highland Park near us. Do you see the use of social media after this for other teens who may be watching as something that could be beneficial to connect with other people or something, hey, take a break and stay off because of the political conversations that may be surrounding it? What do you think would be the best way to, advice I should say, to give to people? Yeah, and I think that's a really difficult question, especially because we have seen so many of these instances really sadly. Um, I think that it's twofold. I think for a lot of teens, I would say, check in on yourself. If you're scrolling and you feel like it is too overwhelming, absolutely take a step back. Um, if there are teens out there who see this and want to continue with advocacy efforts, they want to know more, um, I'd say, you know, scroll to see if you can find that community. But most likely there are communities outside of the social media container. And oftentimes what I found is it can be incredibly overwhelming. Um, and it's it can be really better to go to other external sources for information. Um, but using social media as that catalyst to find that information can be a method. Well, Emma, we really appreciate your time this morning. Do we get your age right that you're only 19? Yes, I'm 19. I'm well, a sophomore at WashU. You, you speak like a college <laughs> professor and uh, very impressed. And we really appreciate your, your uh, perspective and your time this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. You can find more information at logoffmovement.org. You can follow uh, their uh, social media accounts as well. 
going to take a quick break. We'll be right back.